Hello, this work is about multi-key fully homomorphic encryption in the plan model. I'm Zheng Zhongjing from Johns Hopkins University. This work is joined with Propangian Anans, Abstract Jen, and Julio Malabota. The notion of multi-key fully homomorphic encryption was proposed in LTV12, and is defined as follows. Suppose there are n parties. Firstly, each party runs some key generation algorithm and obtain a public key and a secret key. Then each party output their public keys. Next, anyone with these public keys can use them to encrypt some messages into ciphertext. So let's consider if there is a circuit C, then anyone can do a homomorphic evaluation of C over this ciphertext and obtain a encryption of the output. However, to obtain the actual output of the circuit C, all these parties need to be involved in a multi-round decryption protocol, and finally recover the output. For the properties, we require this scheme to satisfy the compactness, which means the homomorphically evaluated ciphertext uh, has a size independent of the circuit being evaluated. But we allow the size of the new ciphertext uh, to depend on the depth of the circuit being evaluated. For the security, we require that any adversary can only learn the output of the circuit and nothing else. We want to emphasize that here there is an implicit reusability, which means the decryption protocol can run for different homomorphically evaluated ciphertexts without regenerating the public keys or the ciphertexts. Uh, for example, if there is another circuit C prime and we obtain a homomorphic evaluation of C prime over these ciphertexts. Then to decrypt the homomorphically evaluated ciphertexts, all these parties only need to do another decryption protocol and finally recover the output of C prime. So all these parties, they don't need to generate some other uh, public keys or ciphertexts. Later, in the work of MW16, they proposed a multi-key FHE with one round decryption property. So instead of doing a multi-round decryption protocol in the previous work, in MW16, the decryption protocol is in one round where each party outputs some partial decryption of the homomorphically evaluated ciphertext. And finally, all the parties with this uh, partial decryption can publicly recover the output of the circuit. Multi-key FAG has found many applications in cryptography. The first application is to run the multi-party computation in MW16. And later, this notion was also found useful in other areas. For example, it's also used in the spooky encryption and the homomorphic security sharing, obfuscation and functional encryption, multi-party obfuscation and the homomorphic time lock puzzles, ad hoc multi-input functional encryptions, etc. On the prior works, a multi-key FAG with one round decryption, we find that all the existing contractions either need a trusted setup or need some strong assumptions, such as sub-exponentially secure indistinguishable obfuscation. So we raise the following natural question. In the plan model, does multi-key FAG with one round decryption exist? And here is our result. Our first result is a construction of multi-key FAG with one round decryption in the plan model from learning with arrow, ring learning with arrow, and a decisional small polynomial ratio problem. And for this construction, 
we also achieve a constant number of party multi-key FIG from only LW. For our second result, we show a construction of a multi-party homomorphic encryption from LW. So this is a notion we introduce as a weakening uh, of multi-key FIG. We will introduce this new notion in the next slide. Now we introduce this new notion of multi-party homomorphic encryption as a weakening of multi-key FIG. This notion is very similar to the multi-key FIG in the sense that it also has a public key generation phase and uh, anyone can use these public keys to encrypt some messages and obtain some separate texts. Now given a circuit C, one can also do the homomorphic evaluation uh, of C over these uh, separate texts and uh, obtain an encryption of the output. And uh, it also has a one round partial decryption procedure where each party can output some de partial decryption of the new cipher text. However, for the public recovery, instead of only takes the partial decryptions as input, this new notion uh, allows the public recovery to also take the circuit being evaluated as input. However, this notion is still non-trivial, so, since it already implies two round reusable multi-party computation with compact communication complexity. To obtain our results, here is our approach. In the previous work, they construct two round MPC protocol from the multi-key FIG. However, in this work, we go the reverse direction. We construct a multi-key FIG from the reusable MPC. And the reusable MPC is defined as follows. It is a special two-round MPC protocol. So in the first round, as any two-round MPC protocol, uh, every party output some encoding of their own private inputs. Next, in the second round, if they want to jointly compute some circuit C, then they output some second-round messages. For the reusability here, we mean the first-round messages are reusable. For example, if this party wants to jointly compute another circuit C', prime, then what they need to do is simply output another second-round messages, while the first-round message can remain unchanged. The notion of reusable MPC was also proposed and constructed in the BL20 from Benning Maps, and also in the recent work of BGMM20 from the decisional Delphi Hellman assumption, or any succinct first round message MPC. In this work, we try to construct a reusable MPC from one time MPC. However, to make our transformation work, we need the one-time MPC to satisfy a special succinctness property that I will explain later. For the rest of the talk, uh, I will show you the construction of the reusable MPC to the multi-key FHE first, and then I will show you the transformation from one-time MPC to the reusable MPC. Our starting point uh, is the observation that LTB12 is in fact in the plan model, but it has a multi-round decryption protocol. So here is the overview of LTB12, and it has a multi-round decryption protocol. So our idea is to run a reusable MPC for the decryption circuit uh, of LTB12. So we don't need to run this multi-round decryption protocol. Specifically, in the one-round decryption, 
uh, we simply output the uh, reusable MPC second round messages. And uh, since the first round message of this reusable MPC doesn't depend on the circuit being evaluated, we can put the first round message into the public keys. Next, I will show you the transformation from one time MPC to the reusable MPC. Our idea is to use a self synthesis approach. To illustrate this idea, I will firstly show you the transformation from one time MPC to two times MPC. So the idea is to use one time MPC to generate two sets of fresh new first round messages of one time MPC itself. For example, so suppose we have a one time MPC and there are n parties and they have input from M1 to Mn. Then in the first round, uh, as in any MPC protocol, uh, these uh, parties, they output some encoding of their own private input. Next, they consider the following circuit G, where G takes the messages uh, M1 to Mn as input, and output two sets of fresh new first round messages of one time MPC. So in the second round, these parties, they jointly compute the circuit G. And after the second round, they obtain the output of G, which are two sets of fresh new first round messages. So they can use the first set for the first time use, and use the second set for the second time use. However, if we try to use this idea, we will encounter a problem. So since we can only obtain the uh, sets of fresh new first round messages after the second round, all these parties they need to involve in a third round to compute the actual circuit they want to compute. To solve this issue, we borrowed the ideas from the reason the works so we apply the round compression techniques. So the idea is to gobble the third round next message function next i to compress the protocol into two rounds. Now here is an overview of our initial attempt. Instead of uh, for the circuit G, instead of output the uh, new first round messages directly we output a label of it. And also in the second round, we output the garbling of the next message function. Now we have shown how to go from one time MPC to two times MPC. So how about from two times reusable to the reversible? The idea is to recursively apply the self-synthesis approach. So recall that from our one time to two times transformation, uh, we use our one time MPC to generate two sets of new first round messages of one time MPC itself. So we can apply this uh, self synthesis approach recursively to the two fresh uh, one time MPC and continue doing this. Now consider given a circuit C. Uh, how do we choose the one time MPC uh, according to the circuit? So the idea is to work down the tree according to the bit representation of C. For example, uh, if the first bit of C is zero, then at the note node, we choose its left child. And if the second bit of C is one, then in the next step, we would choose its right child. We continue doing this until we reach the leaf node of the tree, and we evaluate the circuit on that one-time MPC. 
However, if we use this approach, we would encounter a time complexity blow up. This is due to the following fact. So for the one-time MPC in the plan model, the time complexity of the first round message is proportional to the size of the circuit and some polynomial overhead of the security parameter lambda. So let's say at the bottom level, the time complexity of the first round message is uh, C times lambda. Then in the uh, second and last level, the time complexity becomes C times lambda square. And if we go all the way up to the root node, then the time complexity becomes exponential in the security parameter lambda. To solve this issue, we firstly identify the necessary condition for recursion. We find that if we assume the one-time MPC is succinct, which means it's a round complexity of the first round message is independent of the size of the circuit being evaluated, then such a recursion can go through. And we also observe that the MPC construction in the work of MW16 satisfies this succinctness, but their construction is in the CRS model. So we use the different MPCs at each tree node. At the root node, we use a plan model one-time PC without any succinctness. But for the rest of the nodes in the tree, we use the succinct MPC in the CRS model. And finally, in fact, we showed that uh, such a succinct one-time MPC in the pre-processing model suffices for our recursion. This is because uh, we can generate such a CRS in the MPC. And this concludes our generic transformation. Thank you.